So as crime in New York City continues to be at crisis levels, the NYPD has seen more resignations this year Smiggity. than any time in the past two decades. Now, according to the Detectives Union, there are 2,000 fewer detectives today than years ago when crime was lower, and that means a potential... 2,000? What the fuck? I wonder why. Oh, that's that's insane number, dude. That is an insane number. Two thousand less. Yo, recipe for success. What the fuck? That would be scary if it was nationwide. So as crime in New York City continues to be at crisis levels, the NYPD has seen more resignations this year than any time in the past two decades. Now, according to the detectives union, there are 2,000 fewer detectives today than years ago when crime was lower, and that means a potential impact on investigating crimes and public safety. But this morning, police have another headache to deal with. This massive warehouse fire in Red Hook, Brooklyn. The facility housed evidence in police investigations and cold cases. Joining us this morning, Detective... Do you think that's accidental? So a bunch it more just be. got let off. It could be. I mean, it doesn't have to be a conspiracy. I think, I mean, but, or it could be, it could be a conspiracy. It may be. I, 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 I just, I just. Oh my God! Like this city, the way it's being run, I, I had high hopes, man, for this, for Adams, man. And why why would you? you? Why would you? Right. Because man, he's ex cop and shit, and they needed, and I knew it was only a Democrat was going to win, and out of all the Democrats, he was the ex cop Democrat. You that knew the part that did. You knew that the Democrat that comes out of that primary, the winner, is the worst case scenario, regardless of what they look like or how they sound. They are the worst case scenario. Yeah. To Paul DiGiacomo, president of the Detectives Endowment Association. Detective, nice to have you back on Good Day, Good New morning. York. Thank you. What do we know about this fire? How did it start? Well, that I don't know at this point, uh, but, you know, the to preserve the evidence in that building is going to be difficult and uh, until uh, the detectives from the arson and explosion unit get in there and and see the damage uh, we won't have any determination so how important was the evidence there we're hearing like possible dna evidence uh was lost well i don't know if it was lost uh, that should have to be determined again a lot of that information is backed up on the computer systems okay let's go back to the fact that we just said 2,000 less detectives now compared to when crime was lower. Mm -hmm. That is a frightening statistic. Yes, it is. And uh, detectives are doing a lot more now than they did then. We're doing counterterrorism duties as well. And there are, there are a lot more steps in an investigation but, but why now are you losing them? Then. Why are you losing them at these record numbers? Well, they just never have been replaced. Uh, and it's, uh, it's pretty sad. Uh, the average detective right now is carrying about precinct detective squad uh, each detective is carrying about 350 cases. Mm. And in the busiest squad... <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> so none are getting solved, basically, is what they're saying. Like, yeah, that's a lot of fucking cases, man. They're not going to solve shit if that's the case. They're not touching those. Listen. <laughs> the number of cases... Good. The number of cases alone will cause more cops to be like, fuck this. Yeah. Like, I, listen, I'm lazy, man. I'm a son, man. man. I'm lazy, man. Fuck that. 350 cases. Like, come on, man. You think about that, man. Like, you got 350 cases. Some shit happens a day. They put a fresh new case on your fucking desk. And you got to read over that and learn that shit. How The human mind can't remember all of that shit. Like, it's impossible. Hey, nah, man, that, that, that's those guys are not working those old cases, man. Right. Thank you, sisters. Yeah. Yikes. Bars are carrying about 500 cases. I know. We Very difficult to manage. We spoke to Governor Ned Lamont the other day, and he said he is not making an active campaign to recruit people 
to Connecticut. But I mean, you look at a place like Danbury, it's 50 miles north of, you know, the city here, a fraction of the crime. They're starting pay 60, over $60,000. Here in New York, they're starting pay $42,000. Yeah, it's very sad. Yikes, $42,000. You can't live in New York. So the cops, the cops got to live in the suburbs. You, where you gonna live in New York other than the projects, NYCHA, for fucking $42,000 a year? That's insane, man. That ain't shit. $42,000 a year, that wasn't shit before, the, before inflation hit. Bad. You know, but the expertise and the knowledge that you gain here in the, as a police officer and a detective but people time. are going to want to go somewhere where they get paid more. Well, it's difficult because you've got a lot of obstacles uh, right now. You have a very uh, anti-police sentiment out there. You have a uh, an entity within the city, CCRB, that does nothing but try and hurt the police officer when they're doing their job. Mm -hmm. Speaking of anti-police sentiment, Doctor uh, Detective Dominic Labretti shot back in mm -hmm. June, um, allegedly by a convicted drug dealer. Correct. This guy gets bailed out of jail by... Uh, a former Green Bay Packers running back? Yeah, you know, the interesting part is this. Um, if this individual, his name is Nelson Pizarro, were to do this to an NYPD detective that was wearing a uniform and was identified as a police officer, if he, he, he would do that to a detective, what would he do to the average citizen out in the street? Yeah. And he's walking the streets again. It's uh, the whole world has gone upside down. And this. Wow. You can shoot a cop in uniform and then just get out we walk on the streets this is all because of the bail reform laws that were enacted by the governor and the assembly and the senate but you know we don't hear anything going on in albany you don't hear the governor talking about it you don't hear the very powerful politicians in albany including uh carl hasty who had a shooting outside of his mm -hmm. office Right? That's absolutely correct. Is he at all cooperating with that investigation? You know, if the, they are responsible for the deaths and victimizations of so many people in this city, uh, that is very sad. And uh, until they wake up and, and take control of the situation, more people will die and more people will be victimized. Why won't they cooperate? The voters the voted for this shit. They don't answer. need to cooperate. So they don't have to cooperate. They don't have to do anything about it. They were all just reelected. Exactly. Good point. The state rep had a shooting outside of his office. He was questioned by the police, and he's not snitching. Yo, that the, the situation. Yo, might be respect, under. respect. I respect that. He's keeping it hood. <laughs> yeah, he is. That that's just terrifying. That I ain't man. I ain't man. I ain't, you know I don't talk to police, and that's your fucking state representative and fucking in, in, in the state council. Oh my god! I think it's hard to ask that question because they don't, don't want to. Answer. They don't want to speak about mm -hmm. that. But um, I mean, anything that you could tell, maybe just someone watching, how can they get involved to maybe change this current situation? Well, I think you have to put pressure on your elected officials. You have to put pressure on many of the district attorneys to prosecute these crimes. And we have to put pressure on the judges to keep these individuals behind bars where they belong. Do we know why that Green Bay Packer guy, Ryan Grant, why did he bail out this guy? Well, that's what yet to be determined. From my understanding, uh, this individual laid out $200,000 uh, to get this individual out of jail so he could go out and, uh, and sell more drugs to the young children in our communities. And there's a group of other people that laid out the... Uh, the other 300000 So $500,000 in cash to get this attempted murderer out of jail doesn't make common sense. Can we talk a little bit about crime on the subway? Because um, personally, uh, it's hit two people I know, mm -hmm. two of our staff at Fresco by Scotto um, on Monday night got robbed, mugged on the trains, both on different kind of, you know, lines and stuff like that. But both got mugged uh, on the subway. What is going on down? I know you have a, a lot more police officers, but what is the state of safety down there? Well, I, I wouldn't let anyone in my family ride the subway. Uh, I'll tell you this. When it was a separate agency, the New York City Transit Police, they had over 4,500 cops in the subway. I don't think we have anywhere near that now. 
That's the answer. I mean, because when you start to know, like, you know, there was a time under Bloomberg and Giuliani, like if you heard somebody was robbed or mugged, you didn't know them. Mm -hmm. Now it's every day. You know these people, which I mean is too close to home, and it's terrible. It's too many people becoming victims in this city. Well, they did away with a lot of units within the Transit Bureau uh, that should be reenacted. They had the decoy unit. They had the homeless outreach unit. They had the anti-crime unit down there. They're no longer down there, and that had a big impact on crime. But the, you're also hearing that certain members of the community do not want to cooperate with the police. Well, no. all that does is hurt other people in the community. Mm. Any comment on some of the private security that the MTA is hiring compared to well, maybe Well, I think that's Warren. a violation of the, uh, the contract. I don't think they should uh, be uh, taking uh, jobs away from the police. From but the but police. they're unarmed. Right? They're unarmed, these uh, security people that yeah. they have in the subway? Yeah, they're unarmed, and they're, uh, they're going to violate the law right in front of these security guards. They're doing it in front of the police. Mm -hmm. uh, why aren't they going to do it in front of uh, private security? Lots to unpack this morning. Uh, Detective Paul DiGiacomo, president, president of the Detectives Endowment Association. We appreciate you coming on Good Day New York. Truly an honor, and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. You, you take Merry so Christmas. All right.